Okay, so we are underway. I'm playing level 30. Standard move here uh, with Pond Queen 4 is NF6. That's what's usually played, so I played that. Now, in the early stages of uh, any chess game, what you're trying to do, trying to gain control of the center of the board, you're trying to obtain a good solid pawn structure. And you want to develop your pieces as best you can. Now that's a mistake by the computer. That knight doesn't belong over there. Uh, what is it doing over there? Nothing. You don't want to do that. But try telling that to the computer. It doesn't mean I'll win the game. I'm simply saying it's a mistake. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to reinforce my center pawn. Before I do that, I don't want to obstruct my white-colored bishop. So... We're going to put him out there. Now it's fiend shadowing its bishop. And you see that uh, pawn to queen knight 3, or pawn to king knight 3, and they put the bishop in that uh, square that's vacated, that's called a fiend shadow. Don't ask me to spell that, please. I can't. It's like... Uh, Italian word or something. And kind of having second thoughts. I'll probably just go ahead and do what I was going to do. I wasn't too happy with something I saw. I'll go ahead and move one pawn there. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have cut off my bishop like that. That's not such a hot idea, but I did. You gotta be careful. Always pay attention that you're not obstructing your own pieces early in the game. Because that can really hurt you. I'm going to hold off on doing anything big right now because I'm thinking about castling queenside instead of castling kingside. Because it's got some build up on my kingside and I'm not happy with that. Now, let's put this bishop on my knight. Uh, I'm going to counter that. So I don't give myself a chance to wind up screwing my queen. Okay, it's sealed its own uh, bishop, and that's not a good move. It's not a good move what's at all. My course, I can get out of it by exchanging this bishop for my knight. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do here, is force it to do just that. So the guy's trapped. I wouldn't do that, but like I said, they can get away with this, because it has a relatively even, even piece to trade it with, so it won't hurt it that much. So we'll go ahead and push that rook pawn, and it does a predictable thing. Now, 
And that bishop really does not belong on f6. It's kind of a weird spot for it. And look where it's put its knight. See, his knight is not in a good spot. No, it's not in a good spot. Let's put that knight back there to guard against an intrusion on its rook four, which is colored square right there, where the knight came from. Let's put its knight back there to guard against that. thinking that I'm not going to push my bishop there, which I probably will. In fact, we're going to do that right now, simply so I don't miss the opportunity. See, it's left this king wide open on that diagonal, and that's a bad, bad decision. Okay, so it's moved its king and won't be able to castle. Now its king is obstructing its queen, which is not a good thing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put my queen, I think, up here, threatening to take its pawn. And look what it does. It immediately shoves that pawn at my bishop. I am not impressed. So what we're going to go ahead and do is... Well... No, we're not going to do that. I already have an escape hatch for the white bishop if I need one. Alright, so now let's go ahead and take my bishop. Well, we got ourselves a lively little battle here. Now it's saying basically, uh, in your face, get away from my uh, king's side. Here's my queen. I'm thinking you must be impressed by this, right? Wrong. But I do have to retreat. So we're going to have him withdraw the queen. That's a little too hot on the king side, so I am going to castle queen side. And we'll go from there. Now, a lot of beginners don't understand castling. You can't castle through check. In other words, if a square is controlled by an opposing piece, you can't pass the king over it, or onto it, or from it. If king's in check, you can't castle. But the proceed, or the king or the intended rook has always moved, already moved, you can't castle. However, the procedure is always the same. As long as you have those requirements. Procedure is always the same. You move the king two squares toward sorry I got a recola in my mouth. Move the king two squares towards the rook and then the rook moves to the other side. So I'll go ahead and cancel queen side. So I did not like uh, what I was seeing with that build up on my king side. That could be potentially dangerous. 
I got, I'm kind of growing a little bit because I have a recall in my mouth. So, what it says is left its uh, kingside wide open. And I'm going to go ahead, I think, and we'll put that white bishop out here in a centralized location. I got kind of a problem here. Because it's advancing those pawns like it was some kind of a, I don't know, charge, charge of light brigade. So I think what we'll do here, I don't want this to take all day, so I'm going to take a very risky move, but I'm not going to get anywhere if I don't, so I may as well go for it. Alright, that surprised me. Why move the king? I have no, I don't really understand that, but. That move sucks. Well, hang on. Man, yeah, don't suck as much as I thought. I take it back, the move doesn't suck. Well, I'm gonna put my queen on the same diagonal. Not that it's gonna last, but on the same diagonal as its king. So you gotta hand it to this program. It does some goofy things, but on the other hand, it seems to have pretty good intuitive insights here on some of the things to do. Alright. Now, I suppose Bishop on my knight. I'm not happy with that. So, we're going to go ahead and drop this knight back. He can be of use elsewhere. And I'm seeing a trend here. It's uh, shifting more material from the king side for king side fight. Which is exactly the reason that I did what I did in Castle and Queenside. To get the king the hell out of there. Eventually you have to use him, but not so much in the early stages of the game. Alright, uh, with that knight there, I'm going to tuck my bishop. Back here. I still can't get at my, uh, I still can't get at it as far as what I want to do. But since it's spoiling for kingside fight, we'll start reinforcing on the king's side. And we'll see what we can do for it. 
I don't know what that Rook move is all about. It accomplishes nothing, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so now it's threatening that uh, pawn I have there. Threatening my king pawn. That's not a good thing. So we'll do a purely defensive move. Hmm. All right. Well, unfortunately, now it has a passed pawn. But, of course, so do I. So, I think I'll just drop the queen back. Now we see its queen in a defensive move to protect that critical rook pawn. Fairly critical rook pawn. Uh, oh boy. Yeah, I think this one over. Alright, I'm going to start putting pressure on its uh, pawns on that side. Especially that one pass pawn. We're going after his ass. I probably don't have the firepower to take him down. I can make his life miserable in the center. Now I can have his queen and a pawn for both my rooks if I wind it. And that's really not that good of an equitable trade. To be honest with you, I want to give up my two rooks just to get that idiot pawn. Mm, but what I can do, yeah, I'll put this on pause and think about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a very risky move, which is to advance this uh, bishop pawn here, king bishop pawn. And the reason I want to do that is to free up my queen. It's actually vulnerable to a checkmate. It'll see the checkmate, and it'll uh, respond accordingly. Make no mistake, but it should allow me to at least advance my queen into the center. And it's responded with the rook there, so. The reason I dropped this queen over to rook 2 is so the bishop is guarding the pawn directly so I can't take with the rooks because I have it overpowered on that side. That's why I did that. Now, with that knight sitting there 
I can't do what I want, which is to take my queen over to it and whack it, so I'm going to have to be content with doing something else. And I think that something else will be to Well, I'll have to wait and see. I was going to do something a little radical, but I decided against it. So we're going to back up my past pawn. Now it's starting to get worried. And brought its queen back over. It's really, <laughs> really is still quite impenetrable, because it has good control of the center there with that knight and the bishop, so I can't get through, at least not yet. But it's got to be concerned here, because... Things are running a little thin on the home front. I don't want to run too long on this game, so we'll go ahead and do this. Oh yeah, it's not happy with me. It is not happy at all. Which one to put it? Put it screen. Well, I've definitely focused his attention on that past pawn. So I got a decision here. Do I uh, let it take it, my queen, or do I ram that pawn down its throat and hope for the best? I'm going to ram the pawn down its throat. And... this point, I don't think I have any options. I'm not going to try anything funny. Well, well. So now we see the uh, big problem here. <coughs> For it, it's running out of options. It's threatening my knight. So we'll go ahead and Make off with this bishop, and the knight will take it, of course. That's expected. Now, that knight's out of position and can't aid that pawn. But I think what I'll do, instead of going after the... Well, they're both on past pawns. So I can take my, uh, choice here. Uh, advanced this rook, I don't know why. There's nothing attacking, well, yeah, there is something attacking my pawn at the time. Take that back. The rook has its one rook attacking my pawn, so I'm going to have to be careful here and don't want to drop protection on him 
That's what it's trying to get me to do. But in the meantime, it's boned because I'm going to have a check on its king if it does what I expect it to do. That uh, uh, queen bishop pawn is vulnerable. Alright, it is fast running out of options, so it's deploying its king. I, on the other hand, have plenty of options here. I can leave my bishop sitting there indefinitely as it block that pawn from advancing. And now I'm going to attack that knight. But the real, real reason I'm doing that is to get my rook over here, so it's behind its rook. And, of course, it's threatening to drop its rook back and check my king, which it's going to do. I would assume. I may have to have an escape hatch for <coughs> that. I don't know. I probably should have an escape hatch for my king. Before I do what I want to do. So we'll go ahead and create that escape hatch right there. Uh, it's thoroughly boned at this point. As long as I don't make any screw ups. Not a lot. It's screwed, basically. So we'll go ahead and remove that past pawn that it has while preserving my own past pawn. That's what I was talking about. Of course, I can't take my pawn when it's king. Well, it appears it wants to uh, trade off rooks, which is fine. Hey, I think this position over for a minute. Okay, so... I really can't do anything about this. It's going to get the pawn. But I got a little surprise waiting for it. So we'll take this rock and... We'll threaten this rock, but it's just going to take it. That was expected. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and trade rocks. And now, my rock is up there. And it's going to lose that knight, I hope. It can't check me right away with this rook, so... 
we'll put pressure on him at night and try to get him. I don't think it's going to work. So instead of doing that, here's what we're going to do. So, we're talking tit for tat here. Now we have classic in-game scenario. I need to get my king into this. I also need to watch out for that damn rook. We'll maneuver that bishop out here. And, you know, here we are in the classic in-game battle. I got to get my king moving. I cannot leave his uh, sorry ass sitting there forever and a day, so. I'm going to get him on those pawns, and... Most, more specifically, I have a rook pawn here, which is a pass pawn. Which means it's not in such great shape. Now, it's got that goddamn knight protecting uh, crucial... Square there, uh, Bishop 4 square, so I can't get that rook the way I want to. But we're going to start putting the screws on it. Now, it seems, okay, he's tr moving his pawn, pawn, I better do something about it. So he's dropping his knight back. And given that I have an overwhelming, overwhelmingly superior position here, we're going to go ahead and get the rooks off the board. I do believe. I might be able to get that knight, I don't know, but... Uh, we get the rooks off the board... And we'll guard that pawn. That's an act of desperation. This game is pretty much over with. Now it has no way to stop the pawn. So we'll go ahead and get a queen and check it. And the end comes fairly soon. So, what you do, this is a little in-game strategy. Use a king to try to herd him. Oh, uh, that's it. So that's the first chess battle. I uh, hope you saw the mistakes that I made, and um, one or two that I made. That was a pretty good one. That's the end of the game. Thanks for watching.